Hey everybody, I am really happy to be back crafting. Thank you for joining me. Okay, so I made this ladder out of Walmart um, paint stir sticks and all I did was um, Waverly Antique Wax and um, you know, cut the slats down, kept two original size and then did some twine on the edges to make it look cool. Anyways, I'm gonna cut some um, Walmart uh, jumbo craft sticks, they're about four inches. Um, I'm going to cut three of them, one for each rung of the ladder, and then I'm going to sand the edges off, um, make them rounded, and then instead of painting it white, though, I, I paint it black. I, I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, painting them white first, I should have painted them black for what I, what I wanted them for. So anyways, I end up painting the black over it, then white again, so I could have skipped the white to begin with. But anyways... So we're gonna paint these, we're gonna distress them, and then we're gonna take those um, Dollar Tree rub-on transfers and pick out three words. I picked family, friends, and forever. And I'm gonna, you know, after I get these distressed real well, I'm gonna transfer those onto each piece and the middle one there's a, a wanky, wonky, wonky, yeah, wonky's the word. Anyway, it's wonky, and I don't know why I'm measuring this out. I gotta pick them up and glue them anyways, but anyway, you just wanna center them as best you can. And um, did I glue them first? Yeah, so I glued them first, and the middle one I'm gonna put clamps on because it, it bowed. So I'm gonna put clamps on that one. But anyways, hot glue and tight bond wood glue. I think it's just regular tight bond. Um, I bought some of the tight bond too the other day so it'll be uh, waterproof for things outside. That'll go outside. Um, so yeah, I clamped those. But that ladder is real easy to make and it's been laying around here for about a year and I thought, you know, let's jazz that up a little bit. Make it, you know, just make it look a little um, different. Um, I didn't know what to do with it. So, all right, so I'm going to make a bow and I'm going to tell you I had a hard time. I haven't been crafting. I have had some serious um, problems, um, you know, that people go through sometimes. And um, anyway, so I took the wire out. I don't like the wire. I don't really like the shiny edge of this um, ribbon, but it's a pretty ribbon. I love the ribbon. So anyway, you can't cut it off because then you'll, it'll fray out. But anyways, I had a heck of a time deciding how I wanted to do it. So I take a piece of that wire I pulled out and I, and I tied it up and I decided I did not like that at all. So I end up using a large piece, a medium piece, and a small piece. And putting them, you know, laying them on top of each other, putting a, a small zip tie through it and then um you know fluffing it out a little bit um which you'll see here in a minute yeah i just did not like this at all the way it was so anyway and then i take uh I, you know another piece to make the tails and i dovetail them uh, so anyways a, a larger piece a medium piece and then a smaller piece to go right in the center and i made the center piece just a little bit too big i didn't i didn't care much for how big it was but I fix it with hot glue. I make it smaller with the hot glue so that the end result is, um, you know, turns out really nice. So, yeah, my middle piece just a little bit too big. So, anyway, um, I'm going to glue that right, in, right onto the, um, one of the top pieces of the, the twine that I put in a cross, uh, or an X there, I mean not a cross. So anyways, yeah, I dove, dovetail it, didn't like the way it was, so I put, made it a little bit better. And glue the tail down first, and then glue the bow on top. And yeah, I just thought, you know, I'm gonna jazz this ladder up a little bit. And it was a nice um, beginning project for me of getting back into crafting. And I'm really excited about crafting again. Uh, I went for, I had to go for a while without my medication. And, you know, I have severe depression and I'm suffering from severe grief from losing two children. And um, I just had a time where everything was a chore. I didn't want to, I didn't want to move. I just sat around 
um, kind of hoarding a little bit, uh, just not feeling well. But anyway, so I, you know, hot glue the bow, get it um, proportioned the way I want it with, with hot glue. You know, after you get it stuck down, you can uh, move it around. Anyway, so like I said, I picked out family, friends, and forever. And, you know, I rubbed those on. I had a little bit of trouble with this. Um, it took some of my F off. It took some of the R off. Um, it took the F off. I think pieces of the F off on all three of the pieces, but F off. <laughs> anyway, uh, anyways, I'm, I'm happy to be back, and I am so thankful. If you're watching this video, I am very thankful for you. Um, anyway, uh, I have with that tool that I'm using right there, that Cricut tool, that is the best way for me. It's the only uh, thing that really works for me to get the uh, letters to transfer correctly. I just go around each individual letter with that little point and then you know I have better luck. So anyways the Mod Podge on top and um, now I'm going to use, see how pretty that looks already. Um, now I'm going to use um, some ribbon I got from the Dollar Tree and I had ordered a case of this and I didn't realize it was just one sided. So with it being one sided it kind of restricts you you know to what kind of bows that you can make but anyways I was having a heck of a time with my fingers right here um, I just got up I came down here and my fingers just didn't want to um, cooperate with me but anyways I make a simple uh, awareness type ribbon and tie it with some twine which you know I kind of fought with there and uh, put that I'm gonna put that right on top of the uh, what is that called that ribbon is it gingham no I don't know I, I don't know why I can't think right now I can't think of what that's called but anyway that's me um, anyways I'm gonna put that in the middle there and it looks really really cute I almost glue it upside down I was real close to gluing it upside down but anyways um, I hope you all had a good year last year um, I apologize um, to my subscribers for not making videos um, you know I can make excuses up the wahoo but I just wasn't uh, I wasn't in the right frame of mind so I seem to be now I seem to be happy er and um, you know ready to go here so anyways I'm going to glue that down there I'm just gluing the twine a little bit because it where it broke off when I when I tried to tighten it it broke off so anyways and that's going to be it for this project and i think it's just gorgeous um i'm going to do everything in my house is going to be farmhouse i'm going to get the walls painted and this is going to look amazing on my you know it's going to be i think it's going to be a light gray background um so anyways i'm taking actual picture wire cut off a little piece i think i got that at a um like a tool shop she always has everything buy one get one free so I love to go to that woman's shop but anyway so I'm going to take this you know make sure it's even in the center and then hot glue hot glue it down and uh, a lot of hot glue get both sides down and then glue over top of it and then um, just kind of push it around to make sure that it's not really bulging out I don't want it to really stick out of the, you know off the wall so before I try to hang this, I might add more hot glue to it. Um, but yeah, anyways, so that is it for this project. Look at how cute this turned out. Just adorable, I think. Just adorable. And like I said, the ladder's just been sitting around here since I made it. Okay, this one. So I took an ordinary piece of wood, and I think it's a piece of treated lumber. And somebody probably didn't use this because of the edge which is absolutely gorgeous that edge on that so I'm just taking my old rusty um, wire cutters I've got about 20 pairs of these and I'm just you know the hammer making dents scratches gouges um, I chip pieces off the edge and you know just trying to age it make it look older and you know used and I'm going to use the uh, after I sand it down because it is treated you need to sand it you know some of the surface off and then I'm going to um, use the Waverly Antique Wax. Now I take this um, uh, putty knife or scraper or whatever this thing is. It's got a real pokey end on one side. So 
I actually, you know, I'm actually cutting chunks out of it. But I take it and I make it look like it has nail holes in it. And it works great for that. You know, right where if somebody were to nail this to the wall, you know, there I am doing it right there. Um, where the nails would be. So I made it look like it had nails, nail holes in it. And then, like I said, sand it and then do the Waverly Antique Wax. And uh, then it just looks gorgeous. Just absolutely gorgeous. So... Anyways, I am just so happy to be doing this. Um, I appreciate each and every one of you. If you're watching this, please know I appreciate you. Um, yeah, so look at that. Look at that. So now that Waverly Antique Wax is going to get dark and all those cracks and crevices I put into it. So I just did the voiceover for this. And I forgot to put it on the USB camera that my daughter-in-law and my son got for me. Um, so it was from my video camera and the sound quality was terrible but through the whole video my puppy was getting into everything down here so I had to keep saying get out of there get out of there and I don't want to say too much now because he's laying here sleeping and I am so happy that he's sleeping but um, anyway so I redid the video because the sound quality was just terrible but so I'm just cutting a piece long enough and I'm going to draw an arrow onto that. I'm going to tape it there and then I'm going to draw an arrow onto that. And I just um, googled pictures uh, rustic arrows images and I picked one and mine doesn't look like that arrow because mine is very sloppy and definitely homemade. But I'm not a big fan of the arrow especially the feather part. But um, it's, I think it's, you know, it looks rustic and it's definitely homemade and that's what the sign should be. It's an arrow pointing to something like somebody made it themselves. So anyways, I messed it up and I had to start over. I didn't make the, the uh, point of the arrow big enough, you know, in proportion to the uh, piece of wood. So I'm going to use the ruler to make the, the body of the arrow you know they say straight as an arrow and mine did not turn out that straight even though I did use a ruler um, because you know I was kind of sloppy with the paint so one thing I will tell you I use chalk paint white uh, linen white rust-oleum chalk paint and when I sanded it to make it rustic that chalk paint got into every single pore of that wood so I had to take a wet wipe and wipe it out of it, you know, try to scrub into those each of those little spots and I still couldn't get it all out. So I ended up going back over it with watered down um, antique wax. Um, so you'll see here in a minute, it just, my board just turns white. So there's my little arrow. And that arrow looks a lot better than the arrow ended up looking. <laughs> Because when I got to painting, you know, I, I, when I got to painting it, oh, I didn't even show me painting it. Oh, wow. I don't know where that video went. I'm sorry. But anyway, um, I just painted, you know, I drew it on there with a pencil and then I painted. Now I'm taking every crack and um, chip that I put in it. I'm putting that sandpaper right into that. I folded the sandpaper and I'm putting it right into every crack and every gouge that I made in that to make it look you know more rustic like it's been worn you know with time so like when it got chunked it chunked the paint too so anyways yeah look at how white the wood is it was terrible absolutely terrible so um, if I do this again it won't be with um, chalk paint I'll use um, either house paint or you know whatever the little bottles of paint so anyways that's, I'm just showing you how I'm getting in each one of those little grooves with it and you know making it look good that I'm going to use a baby wipe on it to try to get most of the white off and chalk paint you know before you seal it it just wipes right off so at one point I had actually wiped the whole end the feather part of the arrow off and redid them because they were so terrible I just could not get them to look great you know so anyways um see all the little spots of white in every hole every crevice there's white 
so I ended up going over it with the Waverly and then I wiped some of the finish off down by the air by the feathers so you know it was a big learning curve but um, it still turned out really nice I still like it I like the way it, it turned out see there I'm I got it uh, my knife plate in there trying to get in those little cracks and stuff and it just didn't work so I'm taking some I don't think am I gonna do the twine first huh I thought I went over it with the Waverly wax first oh well anyway I'm gonna put two little pieces of twine on it and I'm just making sure that I'm exactly the same on both sides um, I, th I think I went at an inch and a half or an inch and three quarters I'm not sure but anyways I'm just gonna put two little pieces of twine on it and like anything that you go to hang that's really heavy and this piece of wood is heavy um, you want to, if you're hanging it with something like a roper or twine or whatever you have to put a lot of glue behind the twine up towards the top of the twine if not it'll hang um, it'll hang uh, what am I trying to say it'll fall forward and hang forward so in order to keep it closer to the wall you want to bring your glue up like I'm doing there to the top so that you only have just a little bit of twine that'll move so you don't want the whole piece of twine to move when you hang it you want it to um, just be a little piece there so that it doesn't hang off the wall it hangs up against the wall I hope that makes sense and I'm sorry if it didn't um, so anyway once I do that then I'm showing you how bad that um, wiping that down made it look so I'm just taking some Waverly wax and some just plain water and um, just getting into those areas and I pretty much do the whole thing and I try to get into those little holes where you can see the white um, you know and make them look make them look the way make it look the way it did before I got the chalk paint in it so I guess I probably didn't have to show this whole thing but anyway here it is but you can just see the difference there um, and you know like I said this is a gorgeous sign even if I did mess the arrow up it's still a, it's still gorgeous and it's very farmhouse I'm getting ready to do the whole house um, you got to get it painted first and then I'm getting ready to do the whole house uh, farmhouse style so I'm making you know making these things for my own house and this is just gonna look gorgeous I have a little uh, rustic um, American flag that I did a couple years ago and uh, before I was doing I think I did it before I was doing videos I took uh, three pieces of a barrel that had been sitting outside for like 10 years oh look how gorgeous that looks and then I'll show you there look up close at the arrow yeah look at that that's really really good so anyways I took three pieces of that and um, made a American flag out of it and it's absolutely gorgeous so so that'll go really good with that okay so this come from the family dollar and it was originally three dollars and since it was past Valentine's Day I got it for um, half off so $1.50 for this and it's really good quality I was really amazed there's a coating of plastic some kind of like a sheet of plastic over top of that and here I'm just plucking out the staples but I wanted to just do a light sanding and then put um, scrapbook paper over top of it and if it was a Dollar Tree item it wouldn't have that coating on it you could do that but this had a plastic coating so I ended up having to wet it down and roll that whole thing off there so here I'm going to get rid of the ribbon that's hanging it and then when I'm done I'm going to hang twine I'm going to use twine to um, hang it up so I think the twine is going to look better so okay so originally I paint this black and then I'm going to use um, a black scrapbook paper and when I looked at it I just decided it was too much black so I ended up painting it white um, the frame and I don't know if this frame is not wood they did a dang good job of fooling me because and I'm telling you I didn't have to sand you know how um, Dollar Tree has that MDF board um, 
and you paint on it and the paint will just wipe right off or whatever or you have to sand it first this was not like that this accepted the paint so well and it's just like wood I don't I'm assuming that it is wood so anyways I end up painting it white because I didn't like the two blacks together so I start to paint this with um, the little bottle of paint there and it wasn't sticking it wasn't covering so I got the uh, rust-oleum chalk paint out and I used that and watch my brush is gonna break <laughs> my brush broke anyway I ended up gluing it back together and then putting a piece of tape on it but it still broke on me well several projects later it broke on me so anyway um, I use the chalk paint and the chalk paint covered really well um, and then I do the outside of the, the piece and the inside you know the inside part of the circle or the outside part of the circle whatever you call it with white and I want you know I want the contrasting colors so anyway now I'm going to get a piece of scrapbook paper. And I love this. It's got, it's black, but it's got white hearts scribbled all over it. And I made sure that my hearts were right side up, which I have, I did a map one time and I accidentally put the map upside down on my piece. And oh, I was so frustrated because it was so good. It was such a nice looking project. And there my map was upside down. And people didn't really notice it unless I pointed it out. But. But anyways, I mean, you know when you make a mistake, it bothers the heck out of you. So anyways, I'm making sure that I get the Mod Podge really well around, and especially around the edges, to make sure that it's going to, you know, it's not going to come up anywhere, you know, peel off from the edges. So, and then I'm going to take regular water in that cap right there, and I'm going to brush the back of my paper with the water, and it's still got the Mod Podge on the brush. But I get that um, paper pretty wet, you know, put it down where you want it, and then I'm going to use a brayer on it. And then I realized that I pushed it off the corner just a little bit. And even though we're in, you know, we're in, we're in fast motion here. Oh, shoot. That was the bank trying to call me. Anyway, we're in fast motion here. But um, when I went to move the paper, it was already stuck at the bottom. And I got a little wrinkle down there. But fortunately, I braided it out of there. So now I'm going to cut the circle out. And, uh, yeah. That's basically what I'm doing. I'm cutting the circle out. So I'm going to cut the circle out. And then I'm going to take um, the Dollar Tree Rub-On Transfer again. And um, the word home. And I'm going to um, cut out with my Cricut. My, and since I hadn't used my Cricut for so long. This is where I decided I wanted it white. But since I hadn't used my Cricut for so long. I had to uninstall and reinstall. And, you know, by the time I messed around with it and all that, it took me a good hour and a half before I could finally print something out. But anyway, so I'm going to paint this white. Then I'm going to print out, so I had the word home from the rub-on transfers. And then I sa it says, is where the dogs are. And then I, um, you know, I go over this with Mod Podge. But then I found, while I was waiting for the Mod Podge to dry, I was messing around with Cricut. And I found a little dog, and I just couldn't resist. It was an outline of a little dog. So I ended up putting that on there, too. So and I use that little pointy thing to put this word down, and it goes down just great. Um, I didn't have any pr trouble with it at all. So I think when this sign is done, it is just adorable. I absolutely love it. Um, it's my favorite. It's my favorite craft. So, anyway, there's a lot of this that I probably could have cut out, but the video itself is only 27 minutes, so I don't think it's too long. Um, but anyways, I'm so happy to be back. I really am. I'm, I'm happy to be, um, to feel good again, to be back to crafting again. So, yeah, just getting my Mod Podge on, which is, you know, pretty self-explanatory. And here, you know, I have no shame. I put that stuff back in the bottle. <laughs> That's why I always have chunks in it, I'm sure. So, anyway, I hope you all had a great year. I, I had a really bad year last year, and I'm hoping this year is better. I feel better. So, got back on my medication, and things are going good. So, anyways, I think the white looks so much better. And there's my little doggy. So, I'm going to um, go around it with the black 
uh, Sharpie and the Sharpie was almost dry. I mean, it just wasn't doing a good job. So it took me a lot longer than it should have. And I probably should have cut this out, but I did not. So I'm going to, after I get that done, I'm going to try to do it around the edge of the frame, but I decided that painting it was gonna be much easier. So I took some of the chalk paint and I went around the inside and the outside edges of the frame with the black chalk paint, made a few mistakes here and there, but decided that they were okay. So then I took, you know, very light um, brushing and distress the frame a little bit and really light you know and then just in a few places and I think it made it look really really nice and I think this heart looks really nice with the black around it too and I like the contrast of the colors I really do so then I'm going to there, see the heart there and then I'm going to um, use the twine yeah see the black wasn't just wasn't working well so I'm going to take twine and I'm going to hang the sign the way it was with the ribbon originally I'm going to use twine for it um, and that ends up looking really good so I'm going to do the inside and the outside and that's what it turned out looking like kind of fast there wasn't it so we turn it around and then I even it up with the grid on my mat to make sure that everything is even and you know eyeballing the sides and whatnot um, I go by where the staples were and I would write in between the staples with the glue. Yeah. And uh, I go right in between where the staples were. So it's, you know, it's pretty much, I thought I had turned the camera off there and I did not. I did not. So, um, yeah, look at that. Isn't that adorable? Just adorable. Thank you so much for watching my video I really do appreciate it um, if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for coming back if you're new oh thank you so much for watching my video sorry about that um, I'm gonna try to do a video every week please continue to come back and please don't forget to hit like and subscribe thank you so much